tardigrades, those tiny, indestructible, wrinkly little water bears. You know them, you love them, and honestly, if you tried to kill one, you'd fail. I mean, we've really tried. Over the years, scientists have thrown everything but the kitchen sink at these little dudes and nothing seems to phase them. We've shot them out of a gun at 900 meters per second because why not? They've survived being frozen at the coldest temperatures in the universe, boiled at 150 degrees like they were some kind of gourmet tea, and hit with pressures 400 times greater than what we deal with every day. Heck, we even stored them in a freezer for good measure. And if that wasn't enough, we toss them in. <laughs> we. <laughs> We tossed them into space and blasted them with cosmic radiation like they were extras in a sci-fi movie. The result? These little dudes didn't even flinch. Tardigrades just gave the universe a shrug and kept doing their thing. So the question is, how? How are these microscopic survivors doing what basically no other living thing can? Well, it turns out it's all in their biology. And just last month, scientists might have finally figured out the secret sauce that makes these water bears the ultimate survivalists. And here's, here's the kicker. If we can adapt this superpower into our own biology, we're talking about a future where we can stop diseases like cancer, survive in places like the moon or Mars, where there's hardly any atmosphere, and maybe even travel deep into space without turning into a pile of cosmic mush. Oh, and did I mention cryosleep? Yeah, like full on sci-fi status. We're talking long naps through space, waking up just in time to live out our interstellar fantasies. Tardigrades could very well be the greatest survivors on Earth, but their story, how we even discover these little tanks, is just as wild as the extremes they can endure. Back in 1773, a German biologist named Johann Guez was peering through his microscope, probably wondering what weird little creatures he'd spot next when he came across something wild. It wasn't swimming or wriggling like your average microorganism. It was strutting around with eight stubby legs, each with tiny claws, like it had somewhere important to be. Goes, in a stroke of genius, or maybe he was just having a weird day, decided to call it the water bear. And boom, this microscopic critter instantly became more lovable than most pets. Then, a few years later, an Italian biologist, Lazzaro Spallanzani, came along and said, nah, we're gonna call it tardigrata, which means slow walker. Real creative, right? A branding disaster compared to water bear, but the name stuck, even though tardigrades were already carving out a spot in the hearts of people who love weird tiny creatures. But the real magic came in 1842 when a French scientist, Louis Doer, was poking around with these little guys. He was doing his usual thing, watching them hang out in moist moss and accidentally let the moss dry out under his microscope. Suddenly, these little water bears stopped moving. I mean, they didn't just take a nap, they shriveled up like raisins, rolled into tiny balls, and just sat there. My man probably thought he just witnessed some kind of microscopic mass extinction. But then, and here's the kicker, when Doyer rehydrated them, they just woke up like nothing had happened. One minute they're dead, the next they're back in action, crawling around like, what's up, we're back. It was kind of like they had some kind of hidden superpower, which Doyer later called cryptobiosis. Basically, these little guys could shut everything down, metabolism, movement, the whole shebang, and then when conditions improve, just kick back into gear like a 90s Chevy truck. In this state, they could survive pretty much anything. No water, no problem. They didn't care. They were like the ultimate survivalists, like the Bear grills of the microscopic world, except they didn't even need food or water. All right, so now we're getting into the juicy part, how these little tardigrades actually put off this whole I can't die thing. In 2017, a team of scientists led by Thomas Boothby at the University of North Carolina said, we've got to figure out what's really going on with these guys. How are they out here surviving in conditions that would make most creatures tap out faster than a UFC fighter? See. Here's the deal. Water, which makes up most of what's inside us, like 60 to 80%, is usually our buddy. It's the stuff of life, right? But when temperatures get super cold, water turns into an absolute jerk. It freezes, expands, and starts wrecking havoc like a bad tenant, busting through cell membranes, 
breaking apart DNA, and just straight up ruining the place. And while we figured out how to freeze and thaw some things like eggs and sperm, yeah, science is weird. Freezing whole bodies, nah, that's still not happening. No matter what your conspiracy theory uncle says about Walt Disney's frozen head chilling under Disneyland. But tardigrades? They figured it out. They aren't just surviving a chilly breeze or mild frost. These dudes are tanking temperatures as low as negative 270 degrees Celsius. So cold that atoms are basically like, all right, we're done moving. And how do they do it? They start dehydrating themselves losing up to 97% of their water. It's like their version of packing up and heading south for the winter, except instead of heading up Miami, they shrivel up into a little raisin, hunker down, and wait for the world to get a little less crazy. This isn't a quick fix, though. It takes hours for them to dehydrate like that, but by squeezing out nearly all their water, they dodge the whole ice crystals blowing up my insides problem while shrinking themselves down into a tiny, more aerodynamic version of their usual adorable self. They're like, all right, I'm just gonna ride this one out. So here's the thing, it's not just that tardigrades can shrink down like a raisin and call it a day, there's gotta be something deeper going on, some kind of secret sauce, right? Well, Boothby and his team were like, Let's crack this code. They start looking at what's happening at the molecular level when these little guys go into their ton state, you know, the whole raisin thing. Turns out the answer isn't what you'd expect. Instead of regular old proteins that fold up all nice and neat and tidy, tardigrades are packing something a little more, let's say, disorganized. These things are called TDPs, tardigrade specific intrinsically disordered proteins. Yeah, that's basically a mouthful. But basically, they're like the loose threads hanging out in the cell, not really doing much until things get rough. Then they spring into action. When the tardigrades start dying out, these TDPs go full Han Solo in carbonite, turning into this glassy protective layer inside the cell. I'm talking like straight up creating a protective force field around the proteins, keeping everything from falling apart. Imagine you're frying an egg. Those proteins in the egg white go from all clear and organized to a hot scrambled mess. Well, TDPs stop that from happening in tardigrades. They keep things in check so the tardigrade doesn't end up scrambled, even when it's frozen, dried out, or microwaved. And then, in 2021, scientists found something else. Another protein called CA. HS, which stands for Cytoplasmic Abundant Heat Soluble Protein. It works like some kind of next level backup system, creating a gel-like network in the cell, protecting it from all the nasty stuff dehydration or extreme cold can do. It's like the tardigrades got a whole team of bodyguards inside, stopping their cells from turning into a protein smoothie. But Boothby and his crew weren't done. They wanted to test if these TDPs were really the MVPs of tardigrade survival. So they did the most scientific thing ever. They took the genes for these proteins and shoved them into yeast and bacteria. And guess what? These organisms, which would normally dry up and die faster than you can say desiccation, suddenly started surviving the extreme dry out like they'd been training with the tardigrades. These proteins were the real deal. They formed the same protective shield and let these other organisms cheat death, just like the tardigrades. But hold on, there's more. While these TDPs are great for protection against dehydration, they don't do squat when it comes to radiation. I'm talking about the kind of radiation that would fry a human faster than you can blink. The lethal dose for humans is around 50 grays. At that point, you're looking at convulsions and death in like five days. But tardigrades, they can handle 4,000 grays. That's like taking a nuke to the face and walking it off. So now Boothby and the gang were ready to figure out why tardigrades could just laugh in the face of radiation. They picked a specific type of tardigrade called Hypsivius exemplaris, which, let's be honest, was extremely difficult to pronounce and sounds like something you'd order at a fancy restaurant. But it's really just a model tardigrade known for being one tough little bugger. Even though it's a survival machine, radiation is still a big problem. Gamma rays, in particular, will really mess you up. So what do they do? The scientists basically hit these tardigrades with gamma rays strong enough to make most creatures tap out immediately. We're talking doses way beyond what humans could survive. And you'd think this would be the end for our little microscopic friend, but nah, the tardigrade just rolled with it. Boothby and his team were like, how is this thing still alive? So they broke out the big guns, genomic sequencing and 
proteomics to see what was happening on the tiniest level possible. And when you know it, these tardigrades didn't just sit there and take the radiation damage like a champ, they fought back. As soon as the radiation hit, their cells flipped a switch and activated hundreds of genes responsible for DNA repair and protection. It was like calling an entire army of repairmen to fix the damage in real time. Now, two proteins really stood out. One called DSUP, short for damage suppressor, which is basically like the bodyguard for DNA. It literally wraps itself around the DNA strands and says, I got this, taking the hit from radiation so the DNA doesn't break apart like a cheap lawn chair. In populations where DSUP was active, there were way fewer double-stranded DNA breaks, which is like the DNA version of a snapped rope. Then there's TRD1. Another protein that's doing something straight out of a sci-fi movie. This one acts like molecular glue holding chromosomes together even when they start fraying under stress. It's basically giving the cell time to patch things up, preventing the whole thing from falling apart like a bad IKEA dresser. So between the DSUP protecting the DNA like a human shield and TRD1 making sure everything stays glued together, these tardigrades are practically invincible against radiation. It's like they're built for living in a world where the sun just decided to take a permanent vacation and leave behind nothing but gamma rays. All right, so here's where things get really wild. The scientists wanted to see if they could take this superpower that tardigrades have and hook it up to something a little closer to home, us. And because it's science, they didn't just stop at wondering. They actually went and did it. So a researcher from the University of Tokyo named Kunida Takahashi and his team were like, what if we took these proteins, DSUP and TRD1, and jammed them into human cells? What's the worst that could happen? And sure enough, they took these tardigrade genes, spliced them into cultured human kidney cells, yep, we're getting a uh, sci-fi here, <laughs> and hit them with radiation. And guess what? These souped up cells handled it like champs. Compared to normal cells, the ones with DSUP and TRD1 had 40% less damage when hit with x-rays. Think about that, human cells. <laughs> human cells, normally as fragile as a soap bubble in a hurricane, suddenly got that tardigrade level toughness. It's like giving your cells a Kevlar vest, except this one's made out of tardigrade magic. But this raises a pretty interesting question. Why did tardigrades evolve these insane survival skills in the first place? Why go to such extreme lengths to survive conditions that almost nothing else can handle? Well, there's this theory floating around called the ancestral environment theory. The idea is that back in the day, Tardigrade's ancestors might have been living in some seriously rough neighborhoods like early Earth, where the weather couldn't make up its mind and radiation was coming from all directions. So this hardcore survival game they've got going on could just be leftovers from their ancient relatives toughing it out. But here's the part that trips me up. Why does this work even in places like the vacuum of space or at temperatures so cold you'd think atoms would just give up? I mean, nobody told these tardigrades that they'd be going on a cosmic adventure, right? This sounds more like a lucky side effect than something evolution planned for. It's like they evolved all this crazy resilience to deal with simple things like drying out in moss or lichen environments where you might get dehydrated one minute and soak the next. Kind of like a bad camping trip. The very same tricks that let them survive dehydration, like those TDP proteins and other molecular defenses, just happen to also work for surviving deep space and freezing temperatures. I mean, that's some next level coincidence if you ask me. Some folks even think tardigrades came from space. And honestly, I can kind of see where they're coming from. They're like little alien survival tanks. But man, if they did come from space, I'm disappointed they didn't bring cooler gadgets with them. Still, what they can teach us might unlock some mind-blowing future possibilities for human survival. Like we might just be looking at the key to exploring the farthest reaches of space with a little help from these tiny indestructible critters. All right, so now that we've established that tardigrades are basically tiny, indestructible super creatures, the question is, of course, how can they help us? I mean, sure, they're cool to talk about, but what do these little water bears actually mean for us big squishy humans? Well, as we start gearing up to explore other planets like NASA's upcoming Artemis missions to the moon and beyond, we've got a problem. 
Space isn't exactly a welcoming place. Out there, you've got cosmic radiation just waiting to turn your DNA into scrambled eggs. And without Earth's protective atmosphere, astronauts are going to be soaking up way more radiation than they can handle. In fact, this whole radiation thing is one of the biggest roadblocks to us spending any real time in space, let alone setting up shop on Mars or going full Star Trek. NASA's working on some solutions though. They've even got this thing in development that's basically a real life force field. I know it sounds like sci-fi, but this force field could deflect radiation away from habitats, kind of like how a shield protects you from rain. But here's the catch. That means astronauts are gonna be stuck indoors most of the time. Not exactly the space adventure we've all been dreaming about, right? So here's where tardigrades come in. What if instead of building force fields, we just borrow some of their superpowers? Bothby's team has already shown that we can take their genes, the ones that make them so tough, and put them into other organisms. What if we did the same thing with humans? Imagine getting that tardigrade TRD1 protein into our DNA, so when radiation starts frying us, our bodies just fix the damage on the spot. We could be walking around on Mars, chilling in space, all while our DNA's just doing repairs like it's got a full-time maintenance crew. Now, I know that sounds like something out of a comic book, and yeah, we're not there yet, but it's closer than you might think. The University of Tokyo is already testing these tardigrade proteins in human cells, and they're showing some pretty promising results. So who knows? In the future, we might all be walking around with a little bit of tardigrade toughness in us. But hey, if that's a little too far out for you, then there's some more down to earth benefits too. For example, in 2020, some researchers discovered a new species of tardigrade that can survive ridiculous amounts of UV radiation. And it turns out these guys are literally glowing in the dark. No joke, they fluoresce, meaning they absorb UV light and shoot it back out as visible light, kind of like a glow stick. And in a twist that only scientists would think of, they ground up these glowing tardigrades and smeared them on worms, you know, just to see what happens. And guess what? The worms could suddenly handle way more UV radiation thanks to their new glowing tardigrade paste. Now, I don't know about you, but the idea of tardigrade sunscreen being a thing we could buy at the store is both hilarious and terrifying. But instead of turning us into glowing worm people, maybe scientists can come up with a synthetic version that'll keep us safe without the whole paste your body in tardigrades thing. But that's not even the coolest part. There's already work being done to use these tardigrade proteins to protect other stuff, like organs for transplant or life-saving medicines. Imagine being able to keep insulin or vaccines at room temperature instead of constantly worrying about refrigeration. That could be a game changer, especially in remote places where getting a fridge is harder than finding Bigfoot. So yeah, tardigrades, those little wrinkly water bears we can't help but love, might just be the key to a healthier, more resilient future. And who knows? Maybe one day, thanks to these tiny critters, we'll be able to explore the stars without worrying about a little thing like cosmic radiation.